We'll do yeah, that again. We're gonna start again. Now we are live, and in a moment here, we will. And hello, and welcome to Dog Hugs. Geraldine, <laughs> it's great to see you. Folks, we're a little late because I pushed the wrong button, folks. But here we are. And this is. This is Kobe Driscoll, Kobe Francis Driscoll. He is a Cavachon puppy. He's six months old and he is starring in one of my TV commercials today for Tether Tug. We're so excited and we were playing and he messed up my hair. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we are having so much fun over here at my house. God bless my husband. We've had so, about 10 dogs running through my house today. Oh, that is wild. And a Cavachon, uh, you, descri you described as a mix of two different breeds. So as you know, Spaniels and uh, Bichons are two of my favorite breeds. And this is a mix of the Cav King Charles Cavalier Spaniel with a Bichon. And he is fantastic. His, his temperament, he's so sweet, he's so fun. And I love the fact that he looks like he just drank some milk or ate some whipped cream on his chin. <laughs> he's got a little white, he's got a little white mark on his chin. That so is cute. really cute. And so Robbie, cute. I think you're gonna enjoy this little guy over here as well. Hi, <laughs> yeah, he looks a little, little, little bit like Archie there. He looks, he's like Archie. He's Archie. He's Archie's and he's, if you mix Hazel and Archie together and with a little white chin, he'd be their doppelganger. You know what? Hazel has a white chin because she's a party poodle. That's oh, yeah. The only party that she's got is that little white chin. Oh, my goodness. What's his or her name since I got here a little bit late? His name is Kobe Francis Driscoll. He was named after Kobe Bryant in, nice. in memory, in memorial of him. Mm. And uh, so his mother allowed me to borrow him for the last couple of days while we shoot the, the take all the film here at my house. Oh, that's so great. Easy. It's been a lot well, of fun. Hello, Sarah Smith from Saginaw. Great to Hi. see you. Hi, yeah. Sarah. Welcome back. I hope you're yeah. feeling great. We miss you. There are so <laughs> many. And welcome to October. Can you believe I know. it? Yeah. And you know, actually, today is Cattober, which is the international cat birthday for, <laughs> and Robbie will jump into it. She's going to go ahead and share uh, some information about that through all of our social media, which I love her for. We oh. have all kinds of pet holidays in October. It is one of the most abundant pet holiday months on the calendar. And folks, if you guys go to the Positively Woof website, I am going to share with you what's going on over here. And you'll be able to see we have the whole October pet calendar and there is so much going on in October. And I will so, share the link on the page. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So um, look at this. It, it's Adopt a Shelter <laughs> Month, Animal National Animal Safety and Protection Month, National Pet Wellness Month, National Pit Bull Awareness Month. And if you and we've written all kinds of articles, Robbie especially has written all kinds of articles on this. So there's just a ton of pet holidays here in October. And you know, it's Geraldine that we have to thank for Cattober. You invented that, Geraldine? Picked it off last year over on Miawana. So yeah, I was so we started glad. it and we celebrate it the entire month. We're on our wow. second year now. Please, <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, it's just, oh, we should Sarah, celebrate Sarah, every adopted pet's birthdays. We should. Sarah, Not just Sarah dogs. a nice message to us here. Miss you guys Thanks, too. Thanks, Sarah. Let's jump into our special guests here. You know, there, talk about I, your pals. First of all, I love art. You know, I have a design degree and I design pet products. I'm a big artist. Right. You also know that I'm a big fan of all uh, any type of art festival and I love the chalk walk festival here in Kansas mm. City. So last year I was staying at my friend's house while I was attending classes at UMKC and she happened to be hosting a bunch of the artists that were involved with the Kansas City chalk walk. So two of the artists were, that were staying there are our guests today, Cheryl and Wayne Renshaw, and they are unbelievable artists, chalk artists out of California, and I cannot wait to bring them on. They have, they don't, not only do they have their own careers outside of this or have had very successful careers outside of their chalk work, their chalk art is unbelievable. 
It's breathtaking. So let's gonna, bring them to the show. Well, I just want to show oh. folks just just a, a little taste of what we've got going on here with their with their chalk art. Okay, so here we go with with just a taste, so you can see how amazing their work is. And so there, there's there's a taste of it. Wow! Now, if that won't mess with your mind, I love that. Here. All right, let's bring on. Now our special guests, Cheryl and Wayne Renshaw. Here we go. Welcome to the to Dog Hugs, Cheryl and Wayne. Hi. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome. So why chalk? <laughs> Absolutely. Why, why, Do tell. Why, why chalk? Well, um, chalk is kind of a really fun medium. Um, I mean, we all have a piece of chalk when we... Uh, start in kindergarten and elementary school and you get the big Crayola sidewalk chalk art. Well, chalk comes in, in brighter colors too. And it's really easy to work with. You can put it down, you can split, you can blend it, you cannot blend it. Um, it's very forgiving. It's simple and it's very accessible. And, and we're using just standard student grade chalks. So it's a great medium to play with. And when you're done, it washes all off and you can start over and do something different the next time. So that's why we like chalk. I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that it washes all off because that's, that's the part of it that the ego in my artist doesn't really get. You know, I want my artwork to be there for as long as Da Vinci and Rembrandt. There shellacking the artwork so that no one <laughs> rain or more print could ruin it. Where you guys watch it wash away and I, I wouldn't be able to watch it wash away. But but on the other hand, isn't it the, th the thrill of putting it together? Yeah, we think of it as a performance art. That it's, it's like you go to a play, you watch the play, you, you clap at the end and you don't get to take the actors home with you. Um, oh, it's true. <laughs> it is a, it is a pro the, the art is actually the process of making the art. You know, um, and when we're at the festivals, yeah, um, the real kind of fun of it, sure, it's fun to do the art and it's fun to put it down, but most people don't get to see art being made. They get to, they get to walk through the museum and see the end piece, but they, what they don't see is they don't see the artist actually doing it. And that interaction with the public, it, it's a real thrill. It's almost as much thrill as, as actually getting, is actually doing the chalk. So it's a lot of fun. And the art of street painting is the doing. It's not necessarily the end result. End result. Exactly. Do you well, remember the very first one that you ever created? The very first time you ever tried this? Do you remember the very first one? Sure. Um, and we uh, started out doing one about 20 years ago in um, Santa Barbara, and a friend of us, a friend of ours, lives down there. And she, the, the the festival in Santa Barbara is the oldest one in North America, and she had always wanted to be part of it. And she invited a whole bunch of us to come down and do one with her. So we had 15 people on an eight foot by eight foot square, kind of drawing like this, because we didn't have room for for more. Um, and we did a painting that was a reproduction of a friend of ours painting of a green man, um, which is a, um, it, it was a, it's kind of a, a psychedelic version of, one, of a green man. Very yeah. cool. Well, yeah. we've got some wonderful uh, works of yours uh, right here and would love it if you can uh, walk us through. I right. see doggies. Yeah, we have got a dog in formation and looks like a silverback too. Well, mm -hmm. this one was one, we were invited to come to the San Jose Happy Hollow Park and Zoo. And every year the Park and Zoo, they sponsor a fundraising event for a group that is doing conservation, guerrilla conservation mm -hmm. in the Congo. And one of them actually went out to the Congo and took lots of photos of the gorillas. And the way they do conservation, they have a, a group of soldiers that are there to keep the poachers out. Rangers. rangers. And the um, rangers, 
they use bloodhounds to track down the various poachers. So we said, well, let's do an image that combines a gorilla and a uh, bloodhound. Bloodhound, beautiful. A bloodhound. Oh, it was a lot of fun because at the end of the event, the uh, ranger, or, or I'm sorry, the, the Santa Clara uh, sheriff brought her bloodhound. And as you move forward, you can see some of the, uh, move to the next image, you'll see, um, here's the final image. So we did a silverback from one of her photos. And of course we added the uh, bloodhound in the, in the foreground, but the sheriff's deputy, she brought a bloodhound. Oh. And boy, the, blood, the bloodhound was a lot of fun to play with. A really <laughs> sweet dog. There we but, go. There we go. Oh. The, uh, yeah, the bloodhound, really sweet dog. The, the sheriff says they make terrible pets Can because you? they get into everything and they'll find a squirrel and they'll So do border collies. <laughs> I can imagine that. I can imagine and that. <laughs> and cabochons. <laughs> Is the cabochon trying to herd you all day? <laughs> no, no. She, he's trying to unzip my zippers to see what's inside of my bags. <laughs> ah. <laughs> the uh, bloodhounds. What they're best known for is drooling. Is drooling. Yes. Yeah. And they do. They actually get a little smelly because of the wrinkles and the big ears. They t they're very high maintenance. And as you know, yeah. Gail, Gail Kriegel had a a bloodhound for years named Winston. Um, okay. So yes, they they are a little bit on the messy side. They're I call them a lot more high maintenance dog, um, but yes. they're definitely they're definitely worth having. They're they're so lovely, especially if you give them a great job. So oh, this, what this image here is from is taken in a photograph from a certain angle, but that's, that's not right. what actually how it's actually drawn out. When you draw it out, you draw it out all the way stretched out like this. Tell us about this technique. Well, Cheryl and I do a lot of three D art, and yeah. what that means is that we are distorting the artwork so that it'll stand up and it'll look it'll look like it's vertical in front of you. Yeah. But what that means, you wanna, you wanna explain this one, Cheryl? Sure. Um, nice optical illusion. Yeah, essentially we're reversing the laws of perspective. So the things that are the closest to the viewer have to be the smallest because in, in normal perspective, you look across, you know, look, at, look down a street and it looks like everything gets smaller and smaller the farther away you go. So in order to make everything stand up, we have, the things that are the farthest away be the largest. So in this case, the head is huge. Yeah. And the great, or sorry, the um, bloodhound is relatively tiny. They don't look like, I mean, in the final image, they look like they're close to the same size. And in the, if you were to you know, take a drone shot looking straight down, it would look very, very different. Right. And, that, and, and I take it. The little fact, girl's hand that's holding her hand on the pet puppy on the bloodhound's head. That her hand hand is actually back in the air, right? She's not actually yeah, touching she's just doing the this. ground. Oh wow! Boy, it it looks so it's crazy. I love the optical very, illusion. Very. It just messes with oh, my mind. Yeah. I love it. If you look so at this image, you can see that the little girl is about the same size as the bloodhound. Okay. Um, yeah, and and the bloodhound found me, and we had a good time. <laughs> but the head of it, that there we go. There's, there's the real blood. How many and hours? There's Wayne. How many hours? I love that. How many hours did that one? If you remember, what's your or or maybe I'm sure you can probably recall. I would say we probably started about noon. Yeah, yeah, so finished by seven. Uh, yeah, yeah, seven or seven? yeah. Okay. You know, four or five hours Six, at the most. Yeah. And this is really neat because it's mentally and physically challenging for you all. So this, like, after you're finished, you feel like you've run a marathon, but you're not <laughs> falling down yeah. like I would be. Yeah. Well, except for Wayne is obviously falling down there. Um, it's, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we joke that yoga is very important for street painting. This is a wonderful you... image. Oh, that's yeah. so cute. Tell us about this dog and little guy. Okay, this was this was another one day. Um, it was at a uh, festival at a at a um, shopping mall, and um, for this, what we do a lot of is because we do all um, original paintings. Um, we will have photo shoots, and this is where we, we will oftentimes rent um, or borrow friends' dogs. Um, this was a the 
the dog and the kid were, were uh, friends of my sister. So we, we had a photo shoot over at her house and, and just took as many photos as, as we could of, of the uh, dog and the kid playing together. Um, this is Atticus, the Great Dane. Um, and uh, Atticus, was, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a, a, a buddy of um, my niece's dog, Willow, who's we think is part Great Dane, part Black Lab. She looks like a Black Lab and scared to death of water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure, we'll figure exactly. And as you make up the story behind this singular image, that looks like a broken something over there, like a cookie jar. It's a broken cookie jar, yes. So we're, we're, we called this one Partners in Crime. <laughs> partners in crime, because I was going to ask who broke the cookie jar, but the, if, if the they're, they're, they're trying to get their crime. story straight right there. I think. <laughs> That's perfect. Great. What? Oh, look at this. You've got a cattle dog. Yeah. Got a cattle dog. I There's love his cool. bandana. We love our, this is Marla the Wonder Dog, as I like to call her. Nice. A, a friend of ours is a, a, a friend of ours is a chalk as another chalk artist. And he now has two of these cattle dogs. But we were, we were at a festival in San Jose in the park, and, and he had brought his, uh, he had brought Marla to come and play. And it was lunchtime. And Marla is, is a Frisbee dog or a, a tennis ball dog. Obsessed. Obsessed. <laughs> and like so my Katie. Like, I love that. He, well, he would throw the Frisbee, and I, I went and reached for my camera. And you put the camera on, you know, click, 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 click mode. So you push the button and it just shoots as many photographs as it can. And then I pull these, can I, I, he would throw it and I would take a, uh, a take a, as many photos as the camera would want in that section. And you look at the photos and you see that Marla is upside down and backwards and inside, inside out and tied in a knot. But she always lands on her feet with the Frisbee in her mouth and, and a satisfied expression. <laughs> and at one point, I was asking, uh, I was asking Steve, the uh, Marla's Marla's owner. Yeah. I said, "So, how come you've never painted one of Marla?" And he says, "I'm afraid of the color." And if, if you kind of look, especially in the uh, clipboard image, you can see just how much blue you have to put in that mm -hmm. coat in order to get it to look right. You can't just right. reach for the brown and the black. You have to reach for the blue and the pink and yellow and the orange, and that's how you get such a cool image. The breed is also, besides called an Australian cattle dog, this version is called a blue healer. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that makes sense. So that, she, she is yeah. definitely blue, yeah. uh, particularly in photos. In photos. The photos, are, they just came out really blue. So there was a yeah. lot of blue that I had to put down in order to uh, get Marla to look right. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, look at this one. Oh, wow. wow. What one last fun fo thing about Marla, like many okay. dogs, she's kind of squirrely. And so I was Steve was sitting there with Marla in her lap and she was just squirrely and wanting to get up and run and do stuff and she wouldn't sit still. So I reached into my bag where I happened to have a tennis ball and bounced it. And suddenly I have the full undivided attention of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah. 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 Crackhead. <laughs> oh, that's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Oh, Obsessed. Wow. Yes. Oh, tell us about these little ones. So this was for a festival in Sarasota, Florida. Wow. Which, that's um, not near uh, Santa Clara, California. No, it's, it's no. not. We get we get invited to uh, festivals in a normal year, at least um, all, all over the world, in America. Uh, we haven't been beyond U.S. and Canada at this point. Um, but um, this one, the Sarasota, Florida, at one point was the winter home for the Ringling Circus. Mm -hmm. So, right, it, of course, it's called. Um, there's an it's an island, is it? Um, well, it's called Lido Isle, Lido Key. That where they were located, oh, yes. is that right? Lido Key. I took my mom and my sister. My mom and my sister and I went there two, three years ago. Yes, beautiful area. Yeah, yeah. It is. We've so got a nice uh, comment from Kathy on Lala. Uh, amazing artwork, and I like Kathy's dolphin image. Yeah. <laughs> That, that might give you some inspiration for, for your next for, for, for project. Um, 
Well, anyway, this this was actually in downtown Sarasota, so it wasn't on one of the okay. Teams. But um, got it. We thought for the because the theme was circus that we would do a backyard circus. So we we um, recruited all a bunch of neighbor kids. We had uh, little girls across the street and some kids down the street. And of course, for a circus, you need a lion tamer. And so oh. for the lion tamer, that's that's the one over on the uh, right. Uh -huh. uh, he has a lion, and the there lion. Is the lion. If you look closely, let's let's get that close. Quite a lion. lion. A tiny little <laughs> kitty. <laughs> and that, that was, that was uh, Fred, who was a at that oh. point rather elderly um, orange cat that um, lived at the garden where I work. And uh, yeah. I took a bunch of pictures of Fred, and we, we were able to incorporate Fred into the uh, circus. Look at that. There's Fred. Yep. All one right. Of we, one of the things we've discovered is you take 10,000 photos of just anything you can, and sooner or later, you'll use them all. <laughs> <laughs> you'll find something that will work. This, this yeah. next image, um, a friend of ours had done a snake charmer image, and, and didn't want it. We said, hey, that's a kind of a good germ of an idea. But then we decided that we were going to uh, move over and we decided to do the garden hose charmer. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fun, but we, we sat down with our niece who was going to play the flute and sit on the towel. And uh, Cedar, their dog, was not going to be left out. Yeah. No. no. The girl was sitting there on the ground. At, at Cedar was level. thoroughly charmed. Cedar was very charming. Cedar was always charming. So Cedar came and uh, sat. And and one of the fun things with 3D art is sometimes you can get it interactive. You can sit someone next to a photo. This happens to be one of our other one of the other artists. That um, is a fun shot. Well, it, it is. And and uh, this particular artist felt that it was best to be drawing in chalk in the middle of the street in a velvet skirt and an ostrich hat. <laughs> and it had to be a degrees. That's styling right there. That's yeah. Charles styling. If, if, I, if I were dressed in a black velvet skirt, that skirt would no longer be black velvet. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a potpourri of chalk dust. <laughs> These are the uh, kinds of people that you meet at the at the festivals and, and so many wonderful people. And that, that's really what keeps you going. If it wasn't so much fun, nobody would do it because it is a lot of right. work. Yes. And you have to actually plan in advance on how you map this out for the perspective. So do you use a computer program to do that for you? Is it trial and error? Is there a... How, we use I several know. computer programs. Um, primarily, um, we've set up grids, um, perspective grids for, for these paintings. And... Um, yeah, I'm looking at the chalk outlines here. We set up the original grids um, in um, AutoCAD. Uh, we Got both it. use Which um, is an architect's uh, yeah, program. Architect's landscape designer. Which makes so, a lot of sense. Um, and then um, I build the, the image in uh, as a collage in Photoshop. We skew it so that it is... It, um, the, the uh, anamorphic perspective works in Photoshop, and then I trace it in um, Adobe Illustrator. And then, because again, because Wayne's an architect, we have a plotter which plots, prints out um, images, and in this case, the line drawings, um, full scale. So three feet wide and as long as we need in strips of paper. And we, we poke holes in the uh, paper and when we get to the site, we dust chalk through those holes, and then we've got our pattern. That is so smart. Well, there's, a, yeah. there's a bit of a history to this kind of art, and, and you introduced me to a new name for it, Madonari. Yes, the, the Madonari were originally the in, in Italy. They were the, uh, the Madonna painters. So they would sit outside of a cathedral or a church and paint Madonna and Child, or the, the old master's paintings, and reproduce those um, for tips. And um, 
the uh, um, festival in Santa Barbara that we started at is called Imat Nari. Nice. So the Madonna, the Madonna painters, and this is this is they got their start back in the Renaissance. So that was one way if you were an apprentice painter where you would get your experience. Yeah. Another image and another concept. Um, I am just fascinated with this one here, where you're really playing with illusion here. Yeah, this this one this one was one I I, I think I started with. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I need to grab my swimming suit. I'm going to get wet. Where's my towel? Yeah. That's well, so okay. awesome. The summer is Wayne. Um, we took a bunch of pictures in my sister's pool for that. Uh, with an underwater camera, but um, we've got a sea otter on the top. We've got a sea turtle. We've got all sorts of stingray, fish and manta ray, or stingray. Um, and the concept was just it'd be kind of fun to do in a aquarium without the the, the, the walls. Yes, uh, yeah. really clever. The illusion on that one worked particularly well. I think about midday on the first day we were doing that. Cheryl was was sitting there drawing something, and I had finished the uh, otter, and I think we had put down just the top of the cube, and some someone came. I think it might have been this this girl is a uh, the daughter of one of the other artists, and she was sitting on the little uh, uh, pad seat that we sit and chalk on, and someone took back looked back and took the photograph and it really just looks like she's totally floating on top of the cube. Yeah, yeah. It really does. Now that kind I of illusion, a life illusion, check. that kind of yeah. a artistic illusion also has a quite a healthy tradition in art. And help help me say this word, Trump Loy? Trump Loy, yes. It's a French um, word or French term that means fool the eye. Um, and it so this sure does. In the uh, chalk world, we tend to use the word anamorphic projection because that's, yes. that's how yes. we're doing it. We're just taking an image and projecting it flat on the ground and then drawing all the distortions, etc., that are inherent in that. That's it's really hard to tell here, but this image is about 25 feet tall. Oh, my goodness. And it's only about... I guess if you go left to right, it's probably about 12. Well, the black on it is about 12 feet, and the image itself, maybe 12 feet if you go corner at the, at the widest point, the it's 12, yeah. 12 feet. But there's a lot of negative space in there. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. The painting explores the 12 square. Yeah, we've got, we've got a question. How how long does it take to complete? And I, I guess the answer is sometimes you have a day, is sometimes you have more than a day. We tend to make our images uh, so that we can get them done in the amount of time ha in the amount of time that's allotted. So if it's a three day festival, we'll hit, put a painting together that takes three days. Mm -hmm. If it's one day, we'll do one day. Um, this one was a three-day festival. We put together a two-day festival because we knew it was going to rain. That one was in New York, upstate New the York. Aqua, the Aqua Cube. Oh, we're in upstate New York, Robbie. Yeah. Yeah. New Paltz. We were okay. in New Paltz. Yeah, that's kind of close to New York City, right? right. It's halfway between. Um, okay. Up the Hudson Valley, halfway between New York and Albany. Okay. My, my, my geography on, on New York is... Rather, us at the uh, Port Authority, we, we slept for about an hour and then they dropped us off in New Paltz. That's about, <laughs> yeah, oh it's a gosh. large town and it's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So you start with, for example, this one photo and combine it yeah. with, with others and look at that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Correct. lovely. This one was one, uh, the festival, the theme was dogs. And at the festival, it was an art and wine festival. They had a greyhound rescue. So we contacted them and said, hey, can we come play with your dogs? And they set up a meeting and there were, I don't know, a half six, dozen, yeah. six, eight dogs. What a good time. We, yeah. brought, we brought our niece who our our niece dogs. Is, yes. <laughs> and uh, what a good time. 
Well, speaking of uh, Greyhound Rescue, I know that we can go right into our shelter shout out because you wanted to celebrate Greyhounds. We did, and and as I mentioned, it was it was really just a good time. Um, these dogs, they're big dogs. They run like the wind. This is what the uh, the uh, the owner said. They run like the wind if they want to. If they don't, <laughs> they actually prefer to watch TV. So they're real couch potatoes. But they're yes. they're total sweethearts. But you know, so true though. Heart. It is. It is. They're not. They're not the smartest dogs in the world. So you know, you really have to keep keep track of them. But wow, they're just they're total sweethearts. Yeah, they've def they've definitely been bred um, because of the racing. They were bred to deal with people well because they they have to be, you know, if if they're, you know, biting people all the time, they're not going to be good racers either. Um, and uh, I think that has affected how how the breed has developed. So they're 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 good good pets as long as you've got it in a closed uh, backyard for them. Yeah. <laughs> Or a long leash. And you pay attention to their needs, yes, and you pay attention to their needs, yeah. whether that be couch potato or racetrack, racetrack dominator. Yeah. As long as we're on the shelter shout out, on the shelter shout outs, uh, Robbie, Geraldine, do you have any shelter shout outs that you'd like to add today? I'm going to jump right in and, and agree with them and and uh, and go straight for the Golden State Greyhound Rescue because I've trained a lot of greyhounds. I love them. Wayne and Cheryl are correct when they say they do what they want to do, <laughs> but when they do it, they do it well. Mm -hmm. So thank you to Golden State Greyhound Adoption for helping adopt out some amazing dogs to some amazing homes. I'm going to go with it too, because it's very cool. And I've never met a Greyhound, but I've always wanted to. That's beautiful. Well, breed-specific rescues are really one way to go, folks. If you if you are interested in a particular kind of dog, there are rescue organizations for every kind of breed. My life, uh, my dog life, began with Golden Retriever Rescue, which is my favorite acronym in the world. G R R. <laughs> <laughs> That's as good as ARF. I love G. Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and um, Wayne and Cheryl, Golden Retriever Rescue. This was up in NorCal when I lived in Silicon Valley, where, where you guys are at. They were, I think, out of um, Palo Alto, I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, as you know, this show is about uh, gratitude and blessing, and we just love, you know, spreading the love. Is there a shout out? for somebody in your life or in the world who, you know, you'd love to sure. spend some love uh, to today. Today happens to be my Aunt Lindy's 70th birthday. Um, she, she has also been a dog owner. I'm not sure. Well, she, she's, she's got a grand dog right now, but uh, she used to have a Basset um, who was known for stealing bagels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, but, that's uh, why am I not surprised? I, I, would, I would like to send a shout out to my Aunt Lindy. That's beautiful. Bassets and Bagels, there's a title in there somewhere. Yeah, really. There that's is. I wish, I wish we had a picture of I wish we had a picture of her with, with bagel in her mouth, because apparently it was just this big, you know, grin. <laughs> uh, Robbie so. Carolyn, who who who's on your heart today? Go ahead, John. I'm going to jump in and say I'm so grateful for Lottie Helpburn, who's the CEO of the Chalk Walk Festival here in Kansas City, which is who I met uh, the Crench the Renshaws through Wayne and uh, Cheryl and Wayne, and also Gail Kriegel, my lifelong partner in crime, as well as she's my other mother, one of my other mothers. Actually, Lottie and Gail are both my other mothers, and they've been uh, lifelong friends. So I'm so grateful for them for investing in the arts, bringing the arts. Uh, bringing uh, shining spotlights on the arts like they do, especially here in the Midwest. I'm so appreciative and grateful for them. So that's where my gratitude shout out goes out to Lottie and Gail. Beautiful. I'm going to second that as well. It's always nice to have, you know, family in, uh, in uh, Kansas city and, and to a festival where we go. It's, it's, and staying with, uh, 
the Kriegels has, has always been just super wonderful. It's, it's so much nicer to, you know, stay in a place where it, it's home instead of it's some a home. Yeah. And it's, it's, because a, it is a home instead of a hotel. And then she has her two huge dogs, which are yes. just Shammy and Moose. <laughs> Shammy and Moose. Uh, sh Shammy and Moose. Yeah, right. Shammy Wonderful. And, moose. and moose, is, moose is as big as a moose, but it, chocolate lab. So it's chocolate moose. <laughs> well, actually, she's a, she's a St. Bernard mixed with, I believe, a chocolate lab and maybe something else. So she's a big St. Bernard mix and she's amazing. She's Amy. massive. If she massive. rolls over on you, you're going down. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just or saying. Leaning. Or leaning, you're going down. You're going down. Uh, Robbie, who's on your heart today? You know, I want to give a shout out to my daughter, Alexa, mm -hmm. who does the dogs of the day every day. Yes. So we love Alexa. Kind of a way to say anybody watching and listening, share a photo of your dog with his or her name on our Facebook page. Then they will be the dog of the day and have a chance to be the supermodel of the week. Very simple, folks. Just post it right on the yep. Positively Wolf Facebook page. And, and uh, yeah, fame and fortune is <laughs> yours. <laughs> Definitely. Um, who, who's on my heart today with all this art talk is I'm thinking about my, my mom's dad, Alex Sherwood, the late Alex Sherwood. May he rest in peace. And uh, he was a professional visual artist, a studio artist. Yeah, I know, Spider, you need to meet him. Yeah, sorry. But, um, you know, those of us who create in any medium, it seems that, it, you know, we don't choose it on some level, that creation seems to choose us, and we just have this need to express. Yeah. True. Well... Cheryl and Wayne Renshaw, we appreciate you guys so much being with us today on Dog Hugs. And um, Spider's up there looking for another tree. And let's see, check this out. Look at where he is. Oh, I'm going to go look for a tree over there, too. I say Kobe is tuckered out. Don't you? There you go. He's like tuckered it. out? I've got Archie sleeping down here. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you all very much, and thank you, and we look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow at the same time on Dog Hugs.